Hey folks, I am Kevin Ioli and welcome to Yahoo Sports on August 14th in Tulsa, Oklahoma of all places. You're going to see this young man, Andrew Maloney, the former WBA Super Flyway champion. He is going to be fighting for the third time against Joshua Franco. I'm sure he is sick of seeing Joshua Franco's face. Uh, he will be done with it, I suppose, on the morning of August 15th. Andrew, how's it going, my friend? Hey, Kevin, I'm going great. Thank you, mate. That away. Um, I guess it's been a lifelong dream of yours to go from Australia and fight somehow in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, eh? <laughs> um, oh, oh, you know, it, it is, definitely. Uh, I never thought really about fighting in Tulsa exactly, but um, to headline a show in America, um, a top rank card, absolutely, that's a dream come true. You know, you've uh, had the two interesting fights uh, with uh, Franco. The first fight, Franco uh, defeated you last summer uh, for the championship. Uh, kind of a surprising performance by him and by you. And then the rematch, you know, filled with controversy. That's why we have this this third fight coming up. Uh, obviously, the, the fight turned out to be a no contest. It was a 26-minute delay. I mean, I wonder what was going on. It took so long to do 26 minutes. But when you look back on that fight, um, has your feelings changed from where it was on fight night on the rematch uh, about uh, about the headbutt and what, what what might have happened? No, they haven't changed one bit. Um, like I knew on the night that punch was uh, that I was damaged from a punch, and after watching the footage, it's extremely clear to me that that was the case. Um, I know the exact moment in the round that it happened, the exact punch, and and I'm sure he knows that too. You know, Andrew, you know how special it is to be a world champion and how difficult it is to win a world championship. And, you know, the night of, you know, you were extremely emotional afterwards uh, and understandably so. I wonder what, what was going through your mind is, you know, as you went back to the dressing room and, you know, went back to your hotel and you thought about what happened. You probably fought, you know, for the first little bit of the fight as good as you could have hoped to fight. And, you know, like, were you wondering, like, you know, is this ever going to get right, get made right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and now that's all on me. Uh, I need to win this fight on August 14 to, to put that, you know, that terrible night to rest. Um, if not, that's going to be something that haunts me for the rest of my life. So uh, August 14, I need to make sure I win this fight and, and come home with my belt. And then I can leave that in the past and, and move forward with my career. When you look at your uh, first fight uh, with Franco, obviously you suffered an injury in the middle of the fight. You had, well, you had a perforated eardrum, correct? Yeah, both of them perforated. One in the, them. early in the fight and one later in the fight, yeah. And, and did you have any other injuries in, in, in during the fight or was it, was it just the eardrums? Uh, I, had a, I had a big cut in my mouth and another one over my eye um, and a slight fracture to my nose. So yeah, quite, quite a lot. <laughs> so, so knowing all that, what the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> I had an off night and in boxing that's what happens you, you know uh, other sports you have a you have an off night and you go home and next week you you redeem yourself but in boxing one off night can put you in hospital you're a guy that's been used to winning uh that was that was the first defeat you suffered how, how mentally difficult was it um, knowing you didn't perform your best and then you add those injuries in and obviously, uh, it, you know, it made it difficult for you to kind of rally down the stretch. Um, you know, was, was it difficult to kind of get back to the gym and, and to get into everyday life, you know, when after you'd worked so hard to become a champion on that particular night, you know, it slipped away from you? Yeah, it was extremely difficult to <clears throat> take the loss and uh, break my heart. Uh, but in terms of getting back to the gym, the opposite it made me so motivated to get back and to work even harder and maybe so much more determined to to get back what's mine and and what i lost and um i did that i trained extremely hard in between those first two fights um and i believe that that second that second fight that hard work should have paid off and i should have won that fight by tko in round two but that was taken away from me um and again that that outcome again has just made me even more determined to stay in the gym and, and work hard every day to make sure that I leave no stone unturned and make sure that I leave that ring with the belt around my waist this time around. You know, I, I want to talk to you about the differences between the two performances. You know, it seemed like you started the second fight, the pace was just higher. 
Um, you know, obviously you got injured in the first fight, but you, you weren't injured in the you know, first round. Um, was it just a mental thing that, you know, or did you realize I had to raise my game or I'm not going to beat this guy? I mean, it's both. I knew I had to raise my game, obviously coming off a loss, but it was more mental, just how determined I was to, to get that belt back. Um, I worked extremely hard and, and really just wanted it so badly. Um, so I, I put everything I had into that training camp and everything I had into that fight uh, to make sure that I got that belt back. And, and that's, again, what I've been doing for the last nine months. And I'm really confident that I'm going to get that belt this time on August 14th. When you, when you walk your corner after the first round of the rematch, you know, did, did you say to yourself, this couldn't be going any better? Because, I mean, that might have been the best round you ever fought as a professional boxer. I mean, you know, you, you were hitting him with pretty much everything, avoiding his shots. You know, you were totally in command of that fight. You high output, everything. You know, when you went back to the corner, uh, kind of what was it going through your mind as you sat down in the store to get your instructions between first and second round? Just relief, I suppose. Um, that had been what I'd been doing in training camp leading up to that fight. I felt I was boxing great at that moment. And, um, yeah, everything we worked on in the gym had, had paid off in that first round. And I knew that I'd shut his eye in that first round. I knew there was quite a lot of damage already. And, um, I was landing punches with, uh, you know, with ease. Everything that I was throwing seemed to be landing and um, I felt in total control and just felt like everything was going to plan and, and what we'd worked on was paying off. Um, you know, obviously when, when a fighter, you know, he, he didn't lose the fight, you know, it was a no contest, but, you know, I'm sure he, he's not happy with how he, uh, you know, fought uh, in the brief time that the fight went on. How do you think he adjusts? I mean, are you anticipating him being any different than, than he fought you last time and figuring, okay, he saw a different side of Andrew Maloney. Do you think he's going to come differently now? Yeah, I think he probably came into that second fight overconfident and probably overlooking me a little bit and thinking he was just going to walk through me. Um, so I've got no doubt he's going to be a lot more determined this time around um, because of the embarrassment that he caught in that second fight. Um <clears throat> not just from the fight itself, but from the, the, you know, the social media just went crazy after that fight with everyone knowing that I should have been the champion that night. So yeah. I'm expecting he's going to be extremely determined, but so am I, I'm even more determined because I need to make sure that I leave that ring with the belt this time. And I've been working extremely hard to make sure that that's the case. Now, for people who don't know, uh, Andrew has an identical twin brother, uh, Jason. Uh, although Andrew is the better looking one of the two, right? So we, we, <laughs> we know that. Uh, but uh, I guess my question is, you know, you, it, it was a lot of fanfare when you guys signed with Top Rank, made your debuts in the U.S. And, you know, as we sit here today talking, you know, we've talked about some of the reasons. For both you and your brother, it hasn't potentially gone the way you'd hope, you know, stardom in the U.S., uh, you know, your brother uh, lost the fight to uh, in a way, no, you know, no, you know, shame in that being he's one of the best fighters in the world. But, um, you know, you guys, it hasn't gone the way you wanted. Do you regret the decision to come to the United States and, and try to, you know, build a, build a name here? Do you think it would have been different in Australia? Or do you feel like even though things have, it's been a rocky road, this has been the right path? No, no doubt in my mind that it was a great decision by us joining top rank. Um, <clears throat> And you know, honestly, you can't thank them enough for the opportunities that they've given us. We've both headlined big shows in America. Um, sorry, my throat. Got something in my throat. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, as, although the fight's results haven't gone exactly how we imagined or, or hoped, um, August 14th is our chance to, to right all that wrong and to, to, you know, get back on the track that, that we want to be and, and dreamed of for so many years. Um, and I believe that's going to be the case. I believe we're going to have two great wins that night, two standout performances and, and really, you know, kick off our career here in America and, and um, just open the door for, for big, big fights in the future. And, and obviously, uh, Australia is a big uh, uh, fight country. You know, we've seen a lot of big fights go there. UFC is even making inroads over there with, with some big crowds is one of the things, you know, to maybe build your notoriety in the U S go home and then have, have a title defense uh, in front of a big crowd over there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, we love fighting in America. It's a, it's a mecca of boxing. This is what we, we dreamed about, you know, growing up in Australia is headlining big shows here in America, but um, 
we would still love to have some big fights in in Australia back home. Uh, it's been quite a while now since we've fought there, and and we really wanted to try and have these fights in Australia, but obviously with the pandemic and the way things are at the moment, it just it wasn't possible. But hopefully. We both have big wins on August 14 and I'd love for our next fights to be in Australia if possible. Um, and we'd definitely love to fight in Australia maybe once a year and, and bring big fights back down to Australia and, and show the talent that there is in Australia. Sure. Um, and then obviously that opens the doors for, for, you know, some of the younger fighters coming up in, in Australia and it gives them a great exposure. Um, but at the end of the day, we do still want to continue our career here in America because this is the fight capital of the world. This is where the big fights are. And, and uh, I believe August 14, we is a huge step towards creating a name for ourselves here in America. You know, I, I want to wrap up with this. You know, I, I know people know how hard fighters train and, you know, the sacrifices that they go through, but I don't really think they always realize everything that you guys go through. So you, you, you fly halfway across the world to, uh, to prepare for a fight and to compete. Uh, but then when you go home, you just can't go home to your family. And now you got it with COVID here. They're still right. A quarantine. When you go back, you don't just get home and go see your family. You still, what it was a two, three week quarantine in Australia. Yeah. So we get put straight into a hotel for two weeks. So you can't see anyone for those two weeks. Um, and that's the third time we've done that now. Third time in this pandemic. So we've spent <clears throat> in total, it'll be eight months away from our families uh, for these three fights. So been a big sacrifice but um as long as i come home with this belt it'll all be worth it what do you do when you're in that hotel for those weeks you know because you know you're close you're just about there are you looking at the <clears> clock <throat> all the time uh, what, what how do you pass that time when you know i'm sure it's hey like when you were kids in the car are we there yet are we there yet <laughs> yeah that's right the time goes extremely slow but um hopefully this time i'll spend that time polishing my new belt all right. Well, that sounds good. Andrew Maloney on August 14th in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He is going to challenge Joshua Franco for the WBA Super Flyweight Championship. Andrew, always great to talk to you uh, as well as your brother, Jason. Uh, best of luck to you guys. Hope to see you soon. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate your time, mate. Thank you. Thank you, brother.